All right, so in this problem, I have 0 0.2 to the power of x is equal to 2. So for this problem, I want to find the value of x. So for my solution, first start with 0 0.2 to the power of x is equal to 2. Now I'm going to take the log on both sides. So I have log 0 0.2 to the power of x is equal to log 2. And if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this exponent b here to the front. So this can equal b times log a. So in this case, I have log 0 0.2 to the power of x, and I can move x to the front. So now I have x times log 0 0.2 is equal to log 2. Now if I divide both sides by log 0 0.2, These two cancel out, and I get x is equal to log 2 over log 0 0.2. Now, if you notice here, log 0 0.2, well, that's the same thing as log of 2 over 10. And if I have something in the form log a over b, this is simply equal to log a minus log b. So in this case, a is 2 and b is 10. So I can rewrite this as x is equal to log 2 over log 2 minus log 10. Now, log 10, as we all know, is simply 1. So I have x is equal to log 2 over log 2 minus 1. Now, log 2, this is equal to 0 0.3010. So I have 0 0.3010 over 0 0.3010 minus 1. And now this is equal to 0 0.3010 over 0 0.6990. And finally, if I divide these two, I get that x is equal to, sorry, this is actually negative 0 0.6990 x is equal to negative 0 0.43. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x to the power of 6 is equal to 144. So I want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, first start with x to the power of x to the power of 6 is equal to 144. And now I'm going to take the power of 6 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 6 to the power of 6 is equal to 144 to the power of 6. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n, right? And a to the power of m times n, well, this is the same thing as a to the power of n times n, because when I'm multiplying two numbers, I can switch the places of them to. It's still the same value. So if a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n, and a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of n times m, this means that this is the same thing as a to the power of n to the power of m. So in simpler terms, a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of n. So in this case, I have x to the power of x to the power of 6 to the power of 6 is equal to 144 to the power of 6. So we can think of x to the power of 6 here as m and 6 as n. So if I switch the places of these two, I get x to the power of 6 to the power of x to the power of 6 
is equal to 144 to the power of 6. So now, I'm going to let x to the power of 6 equal to the variable y. So now I have y to the power of y is equal to 144 to the power of 6. And 144, this is the same thing as 12 squared. So now I have y to the power of y is equal to 12 squared to the power of 6. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n, as I already said before. So 12 to the power of 2 to the power of 6, that's going to equal 12 to the power of 2 times 6, which is 12 to the power of 12. And if I have something from a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of v, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, y is equal to 12. So now remember how we let x to the power of 6 equal y. So this means that x to the power of 6 is equal to 12. So if I take the 6 root on both sides, 6 root of x to the power of 6 is x. So I get x is equal to 6 root of 12. All right, so in this problem, I have 3 to the power of x minus 2 to the power of x is equal to 65. So to start, I'm going to take the power of 2 over 2 on both sides. So now I have 3 to the power of x to the power of 2 over 2 minus 2 to the power of x to the power of 2 over 2 is equal to 65. And 2 over 2, that's the same thing as 1, and anything to the power of 1 is itself. So we are still going by the rules of mathematics here. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of n to the power of m. So in this case, I can switch the places of these two. Sorry. I can actually switch if I can actually rewrite this as 3 to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2. So now I have 3 to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2 minus 2 to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 65. Now I'm going to let 3 to the power of x over 2 equal to the variable a and 2 to the power of x over 2 equal to the variable b. So now I have a squared minus b squared is equal to 65. So a squared minus b squared, that's the same thing as a plus b times a minus b, which is equal to 65. And 65 I can rewrite as 13 times 5. So in this case, a plus b would obviously be greater than a minus b. So we can think of a plus b as 13 because 13 is greater than 5 and a minus b as 5 because we have something times something is equal to something times something. So an a minus b is less than a plus b. So a minus b would be 5 because 5 is also less than 13 and a plus b is greater than a minus b. So a plus b would be 13. So now, this is a simple system of equations. These two cancel out. So I get 2a is equal to 18, meaning a is equal to 9. And if a is equal to 9, then b is equal to 4. So now, going back here, I have 3 to the power of x over 2 is equal to 9. And 2 to the power of x over 2 is equal to 4. So 3 to the power of 2 is obviously equal to 9. So I have x over 2 is equal to 2, meaning x is equal to 4. And I have, again, let's try this out. If we plug in 4 here, we get 2 to the power of 2 equals 4, and 4 equals 4, so that works out. So 4 is my solution.